Breast implant surgery is an operation that's suitable for many patients, in particular patients who feel dissatisfied with the, the size and shape of their breast in particular. And patients who are good candidates are generally fit and well patients without too many illnesses and their breasts are fully developed. They shouldn't be breastfeeding at the time of undergoing surgery. Breast implant surgery is very good in patients who feel that their breasts are too small for the size of their body and adding implants can add volume to give the desired effect. It's also very good for patients who've lost volume in their breast due to breastfeeding or the aging process or even the gravitational process. It can also be used for patients with asymmetry, so one breast larger than the other to match them out and make them more symmetrical and with those patients whose breasts haven't formed normally in the first place. There are multiple breast implants on the market in the UK. The vast majority of breast implants have an outer coating, a silicon shell, and the internal filling of that shell can vary. Most of the breast implants are filled with some form of silicon gel. And in the UK, one of the most popular types of implants is a cohesive gel, which is also known as a gummy bear gel in the United States. Some implants will have a combination of gel and salty water or saline, and a small portion of implants are just saline based, so salt water based. These generally feel less realistic than a silicon based implant, which is softer, but all are available in the UK for use in patients. Implants can be round or teardrop shaped, and a discussion with your surgeon will give you some in indication as to whether be more suitable for round or teardrop shaped. On the whole, teardrop shaped implants are very good for patients with thinner sort of uh, tissue coverage over the implant. A round implant sometimes will give a more uh, uh, augmented appearance and less natural appearance in patients who are slim. But generally speaking, a discussion with your breast surgeon should uh, allow you to pick the right implant for you. There's also the, the coating and the texture on the edge of the implant, which is important. And these can go from smooth to a textured implant. Again, the pros and cons of these can be discussed with your breast surgeon as to what you feel is right for you. Generally speaking, it's a, an individual choice with the patient and the surgeon to make sure you get the right implant that suits your body shape and size. The number of cc's on a breast implant doesn't necessarily relate to cup size. And cup size is something that's very variable even when buying a bra in the UK. Many people who buy a bra will have, or be told there are different cup size depending on which manufacturer they have. So it's something that's poorly understood generally amongst the public, the bra size. Breast implant size is very variable depending on the patient and the body size and shape. So the chest wall width can make a big difference and the, the frame size into how an implant appears. So an implant of a certain size on one lady could make a huge difference to the size of her breast and on another patient make very little difference to the size of her breast. So it's very important when you get your consultation with your, your breast surgeon to be measured up appropriately and discuss which sized implant would be most appropriate for your desired result. Breast implant surgery is usually performed through a small incision measuring four or five centimeters in the crease where the breast meets the chest wall at the lower aspect of the breast. The vast majority of breast enlargement surgery in the UK is performed this way. You could also have a small incision made around the nipple and sometimes in the armpit. There's pros and cons to each, but generally speaking, the most popular choice is underneath the breast because the scars heal very well and they're not usually seen longer term. The surgery itself takes approximately an hour to an hour and a half, depending on the complexity of the patient. Uh, surgical space is made usually beneath the breast tissue and either on top or below the muscle on the chest wall. An implant then placed into the area and the skin is stitched up with stitches that are routinely dissolvable. Patients tend to go home on the same day of surgery, provided they feel well after their anaesthetic and they're safe to do so, and that their pain's well controlled.
patients usually require at least a week off work after they've had breast implant surgery. They can expect some swelling to the area, which can last for up to six weeks, sometimes even longer. The stitches themselves should have healed within two weeks, and then the dressings are usually taken off at this time. Patients will experience some pain over the first week or two, and painkillers will be necessary for this. So it's really important to take regular painkillers, such as paracetamol and ibuprofen. Patients will also get some numbness to the area on the breast, which can take up to six months to heal and can involve the nipple at times. It's really important not to do anything too strenuous in that first period after surgery. So uh, a support bra is recommended day and night for six weeks after surgery while the implants are finding their place to make sure that they don't move and give a poor cosmetic result. During this time, it's recommended that Hard exercise is avoided, certainly for the first six weeks. And generally speaking, patients shouldn't lift heavy weights, nothing more than five kilograms for that period of time. Beyond six weeks, patients should be back to normal, regular activities. Uh, and it can take up to about six months for the implants to find their full position and to settle and drop down to where they're going to end up. Breast implants are generally very safe devices. So they're implanted into the patient and they can be left in provided they don't have any further complications. Complications can arise in any patient and the long-term complications of implants would be things like implant rupture, where some of the silicon can bleed or leak out of the implant and move into the breast pocket where around the implant or even into the lymph nodes. There have been several large studies that have shown that this doesn't cause any significant harm to the patient and doesn't predispose them to breast cancers. Some patients will form excessive scarring around their breast implant, which is known as capsular contracture. This can become painful or distort the shape of the breast, so some patients may require further surgery from, uh, to, to correct that. Breast implants don't cause breast cancers. This is one of the common uh, misunderstandings from the past and several large studies have shown that they are safe longer term. In terms of screening mammograms, the implant can distort the views of the breast and cover some of the breast tissue. So when you get a mammogram, it's very important to let the team know when they're performing the test that you have an implant in and they can take special views. However, there have been some studies that show when you have a breast implant in, you're more likely to feel a cancer at a smaller stage as the implant's pushing the breast tissue forward, so often you can feel cancers at an earlier stage than patients without breast implants. Breast implant surgery doesn't increase the, breast, the risk of breast cancer, and there are several studies which show this. The vast majority of breast cancers occur in patients without breast implants, and that's largely due to the numbers of patients who have implants versus don't have implants. There is a condition called anaplastic large cell lymphoma, which is a cancer of the immune system that is incredibly rare, but has been shown to be associated with some forms of breast implants, where a cancer will grow within the capsule or the scar tissue surrounding the implant. This is very rare and generally treated with surgery alone. Some patients require further treatments, but in comparison to the risk of breast cancer in the UK, this is just so rare that it's something that patients need to be aware of but really shouldn't be a, a big concern as long as they remain breast aware after they've had their surgery and keep an eye on themselves if they develop any new symptoms to go and be checked out by the, the breast team 